To this video song frontier video. I am not V West Life, um, despite the fact that there is classical music playing in the background. Now, here I have one of my friend's laptops to fix. Unfortunately, this machine seems to have caught some sort of virus, most probably something like chlamydia or syphilis or herpes or something like that, and um, you know, it's been to the doctors, it's had the tests, and it's rung all its partners and said, look, I've got this virus, you know, you might want to go and get yourself tested. But then again, that's what happens when you go down to the Priory on a Saturday night and just kind of make merry with whoever. Moving on. <coughs> so, my friend kind of did the right thing by coming to me to have the machine fixed. So, looking at the palm rest, we can see the... Um, specs of the machine. It's, it's pulling a Pentium dual core 1.73 gigahertz with a 13.3 widescreen TFT, 1 gig of memory, 120 gig hard disk drive and the DVD RW optical drive. Comes with Microsoft Windows Vista Home Premium. Also yeah, there's, there's four USB 2 ports, VGA out, headphone out, microphone in, 10 100 megabit LAN, and then B and G wireless LAN. So, while it's not the fastest machine on the shelf, it's certainly not a bad wee computer, or it's got the potential not to. It's got the potential to be a pretty good machine. I would say anyway. Certainly a Pentium dual core. You know, they're, they're not as bad as Pentiums have been in the past. So, what my plan is is to upgrade this machine to Windows 7. Because I'm going to have to do a wipe on the hard drive anyway. I mean, my, <clears throat> my friend has been complaining that it's quite slow. And because she's my friend, you know, I've got a spare Windows 7 key. I can give it to her. And um, while I'm at it, I'm going to root out my RAM stores because I've got, I've got some RAM. Um, probably what I'm going to do is take the RAM out of this machine, put it in the Dell Latitude D500 because the D5 uh, D510 because the D510 has a one gig stick of RAM, and I believe, you know, from another job I have done, I've got memory as well. Although I'm going to have to have a look into that and see, you know, kind of what memory I do have. But if I've got enough, then you know that is certainly the plan that I'm going to upgrade this to two gigs of memory because. Obviously, 2 gigs is going to be better than 1, in any case. And because it's only got 1 gig and potentially going to have 2, the best thing I can do is actually upgrade to Windows 7 32-bit. And to be honest, I'm not entirely sure that um, the Pentium Dual Core T2370 is a 64-bit core. In fact, let me look it up on Intel's website. So, um, I can t it's really quite good that Intel still kind of uh, list all the um, specs of the processor. So, I've actually had a look. It's uh, got one megabyte of uh, cache, which isn't a right lot, but bearing in mind, it is only a Pentium dual core. It's not a core 2 dual. It's not even, you know, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's, it's better than a Celeron, but kind of only just. was launched... Um, in the first quarter of 2008, it's got two cores, obviously, that's why it's called a Pentium dual core. 1.73 gigahertz, 1 meg of cache, 533 megahertz front side bus speed. So, again, not really that fast. We're only just kind of getting to the territory where it's just a wee bit faster than, um, you know, the previous generation. Um, 
FSB parity, no instruction set, 64 bit. So it actually does have a 64 bit instruction set. No embedded options available. A 65 nanometer processor, lithography, whatever that is. 35 watt um, VIT uh, voltage range 1.075V to 1.175V. Recommended customer price, not applicable. Okay, that means that, you know, if I want a Pentium um, dual core T2370, I should just be able to get one for free, right? Wrong. So, that's a processor in this thing, backed up with one gig of DDR2 memory, possibly um, of the um, 533 megahertz variety which is obviously very nice so best thing I can do is find a Windows 7 CD and get installing so let's do that so I've got a case of tricks here Windows XP Home Edition, don't want that. Windows XP Pro, don't need that. Windows Fundamentals for Legacy PCs, don't need that. Ah, here we go, Windows 7 Home Premium. Now, I do have legitimate license keys, but I do have copied CD images. A copied CD image isn't illegal, it's if you start using illegitimate license keys. So, this media is not illegal. Oh right, yeah, the DVD drives on the other side. Actually quite useful in this stand, uh, circumstance because it means I don't actually have to move the PC out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the DVD in. Obviously I don't have the password to this machine. Which is quite good because you're not going to see any of my friends' uh, private files. Now, when you're reformatting and reinstalling, make sure that you back up your data first. I cannot be held responsible for lost data either in this video or if you actually pay me to fix your computer. If you actually pay me through Jay Wakefield Computers, I do normally offer a backup service at an extra cost. Now, to get to this boot menu, I've pressed F12 when I booted up the machine. This is quite common on a lot of machines. My ThinkPads do it, my Dells do it. Some machines that you, that prefer you to press the Escape key. Some like you to press the F12 key. F12 is very common. Now, I've got an option to boot either from the ID CD drive or the ID HDD drive. So, the fact that it's using ID kind of tells me that it's... Um, you know, using kind of previous gen technologies. Press any key to boot from the CD or DVD. That actually literally means fall on the keyboard and, you know, just, well, you could fall on the keyboard and it'll start, but don't do that. Just kind of hit any key that you want. Don't go looking for the any key, it won't be there. So what's going to happen now is Windows 7 is actually going to load up all the files. Loading up the files, loading up the files. This can take a wee while. So, um, you know, if you've got a cup of tea, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have a wee drink of it now. I smell a Paramount Galaxy video coming up. He's dual booting his Dell Latitude D630 with XP in Windows 7. Well, I suppose it's better than him trying to dual boot a Pentium 2 with Windows XP in Windows 7. <clears throat> okay, now what's going to happen here? You think it's all loaded fully, but the progress bar is going to go somewhere back to the beginning. Oh, no it isn't. Not on this one. 
And then you'll see the very, very fancy um, Windows 7 startup screen. Obviously, it will take longer um, on here because it's booting from the CD. When you're booting from the hard drive, Windows 7 will start up a lot quicker. Okay, so here we are in Windows 7 setup. Now, because we uh, both live in Scotland, we have to select English United Kingdom for the time and currency format. And because Windows setup is clever, it will automatically change it for keyboard or input method. However, the, if this was like one of my machines, well, a couple of my machines that I have and had an American keyboard, I could change this keyboard layout to whatever I needed it to be. But because this is a UK laptop in the UK, I can set the time and currency format to English United Kingdom. Click next. What I want to do is I want to go and install now. Because I don't need to repair it or anything. Like I said, my friend has assured me that all her have, all have files have been backed up. So, um, yeah. Now, normally I would not recommend this. But, um... I think what I'm going to do here is actually delete the recovery partition due to the virus. And because, you know, I, I'm there, you know, for my friend to actually be able to, you know, work the machine. And to be honest, I mean, all these, all these partitions are doing is just taking up space. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete all this lot and just have one big partition. As it's only a 120 gigabyte hard disk. If it was a bigger hard disk, I'd probably set up a separate data partition. What I'm just going to do here is click next. And what Windows will do is it will actually just uh, make partitions automatically. It will make a 100 meg uh, system reserve partition. Though, you know, that is perfectly normal. Don't worry about that. So as you can see now, Windows 7 is now installing. And this laptop is the EI Systems 1201. EI Systems, uh, basically for those of you who don't know, they're PC World and Curry's its own brand of machines. Personally, I wouldn't get one, but do you know what? It's fine. Do you know what I mean? With, with proper care, I mean, if you ask Billy Carr about which laptop to get, I mean, he will tell you that he likes pretty much any mark of machine, as long as you take care of it. Some will fail more than others. But, I mean, this one has been going strong now, you know, for a good, probably four or five years. So, it should keep going. Obviously, parts are going to be more difficult to find. You know, let's say if the optical drive were to go pet part, it would be more difficult to find an optical drive than it would to find a, you know, for something like a Dell Latitude. But, um... Like I say, if you take care of your machines, they will last. Now, this part of setup is going to take a while, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump cut. Um, and while I'm doing that, if you, you know, if if you're actually following this installation, you're actually doing, um, you're actually installing Windows Seven along with me. P please feel free to pause this video now and go and make yourself a nice wee cup of tea, because you know. There's, there's really nothing interesting to watch here. Sorry, there's a couple of housekeeping tasks that um, I wanted to kind of make you all aware of. Um, 
There was something that I completely missed out in my assistive technology video, and unfortunately my memory has failed me. However, the second thing is, um, I would like to thank Billy Corr for doing that video on the uh, Compact Ar uh, Presario internet PC that he did um, before it was sold. That machine has now sold. He did that actually by special request from me, you know, because I do like um, I do like old compacts, and he knows that. So he did that video for me, and um, you know what, Billy, I really did appreciate that. You did me a pure solid there. Um, <clears throat> so that was really quite good. Um, however, with the um, assistive technology, I forgot to show you Zoom text in Windows 2000 Professional. So, um, yeah, that was a bit of a derp. And, um, of course, screen readers were available for Windows 95. It's just that that particular version of JAWS did not work on Windows 98 in my assistive technology video. Oh, and for those of you wondering about the Amiga, unfortunately, when I did get it out, the machine was dead on arrival, even though it had been uh, rusted as working. So I actually contacted the seller, you know, had a bit of bother there. I just eventually got my money back. Because, I mean, that, that sale was just, you know, unfortunately, I hate to say it, but that sale was just a, a, you know, pretty bad experience for me. So, you know, I just put the Amiga back. Got my money back. I mean, I'd like to get one again in the future, but um, it's a bit of a shame. Also, um, the Amstrad with the non-working floppy drive, the guy actually gave me my money back, but told me that I could keep the Amstrad and all the software. So, do you know what? Thank you. I appreciate that, because he knew that I liked the software and, you know, the mouse that came with it and everything. It did come with quite a nice bundle, so it wasn't a complete dead loss. So, I mean, because he didn't realise that the floppy drive was non-working, he's actually just said, look, keep the machine and have the money. So hopefully, if I can get onto an Amstrad uh, ALT386 users group, of which there are them around, someone might be able to send me a, a replacement 1.4 uh, for a megabyte floppy drive. So that's absolutely brilliant. Okay, so that's the machine restarting. What's going to happen now is it's going to boot to the hard drive with Windows 7 for the first time. But obviously there's going to be more things going on. If it asks you to press any key to boot from the CD or DVD, just ignore it as I did. Obviously, you know, if you're worried about that coming up, that will no longer happen, you know, as soon as you eject the Windows 7 DVD. And for those wondering, Windows 8 actually installs in pretty much the same way. Obviously, you know, once you actually get to installing it, you know, once you actually get into the, you know, starting, you know, setting it up for first use, everything is completely different, you know, as it wants to show you how to use it. Now, you'll get this. Setup is updating the registry settings. And you actually might find that after it does that, it's going to restart. There you go. <clears throat> now, if the graphics card driver is found, which actually I don't think I'm, at this point this one is being found, um, the screen, and you're on a widescreen machine, it will actually adjust the aspect ratio.
Sorry, I've I've got um, I've got about a million and one things happening on the shit rock. Compact is as reliable as a gunmetal army boot. Where on earth did I get that from? Oh, something's happening. Oh, no, it's not actually adjusted the aspect ratio. Derp. <clears throat> means, I, means I'm going to have to play a nice wee game of Where's the Drivers? Now it's saying setup will uh, continue after restarting the computer. So, yep, you'll get to restart again. So I managed to pull up a specification of the machine while I was um, waiting for this to load. Um, 13.3 screen, uh, screen size screen, Windows Vista Home Premium, 1 gig of RAM, 120 gig hard disk, 1280 by 720 screen resolution, Intel processor, processor series, Core 2 Duo, DERP. Um, 1.73 gigahertz, number of USB ports, 3, DERP. Connections wireless, built-in disk drive, DVD-ROM drive, built-in disk drive, CD-ROM drive, DERP. So it looks like um, it's an SISM672 graphics card. Mmm, lovely. So all I need to really do is just kind of find... Um, the graphics card. Now to set this up for my friend. So um, if I type her name in, it will actually um, make a, com a network name for her. Don't want to set a password at this point as I don't know what the password is going to be. The product key I'm going to enter now. So you know if you'll just bear with me, I'm going to have to stop it here because I don't obviously want to get my product key out. So now it's going to ask. Um, my recommended set. Uh, now it's going to ask, uh, uh, do I want to protect my computer and improve Windows automatically? Yes, we do. Use recommended settings. Going to have a look at the time. The time. The time is correct. So is the date. Um, the time is uh, six o one p.m. Um, on the twenty seventh of March, twenty thirteen. So I just need to do that. 
and then Windows is going to finalise my settings and then it's going to log in. Now naturally I have no wireless drivers. Great. But that's not necessarily a problem. I should be able to find some somewhere for this card. And even better, if there's a network, if um, it's found the LAN card, I can just plug in an, a dirty great Ethernet cable now, and then hopefully connect this machine up to the internet. And the good thing about Windows 7 is it's actually quite easy to get a hold of drivers. There we go. It's found the network. Network. So it's actually going to share it off of the Shetrock. I, usually, I have uh, internet connection sharing through Ethernet enabled on the Shetrock, basically for scenarios like this. Or just to kind of give uh, old machines a piggyback. Now I don't want to set it up with a home group, because this computer is not going to be staying in my house. What I'm going to do, just right click on computer there, and a couple of things I need to find. But before I do that, obviously, I want to install some antivirus protection. So the best way that I can get to that is by going to computer. And because I'm actually connected to my main machine, I can actually go into my own machine and download file sharing. Let's, oops. No, I don't want to turn that on. Oh well. Um, I can actually go to my own machine. It's going to ask for my username and password. So I'm, let me just kind of put that in. Excellent. Okay, so I found a vast antivirus free setup. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy it to this machine. There we go. So it's just going to copy it over so that we're not actually online without virus protection. Because it is important. You must always install antivirus software, no matter how much you think it, think it nags you to update or anything like that. You must, must must install it. And I'm being serious. It's not just a case of now, oh, I'll lose my work. It's a case of, oh, I'll have my identity stolen. If I put my credit card de details in, some internet criminals could get it. Yes, the stakes really are that high. Seriously. A lot of people just do not understand the gravity of the situation. So you must, must, must be extremely careful when going on the internet. I mean that. And that goes with dodgy toolbars. Try and keep the amount of toolbars installed to a minimum if you've got to install any at all. Personally, I don't install any toolbars. Back in the day I used to install the Google toolbar but that's actually no use anymore. So again, with the toolbars, keep away. Sorry for sounding so serious, but um, unfortunately that's just the way it is.
So, sorry about that. It's, it's just taking a wee while to install it. One gig of RAM is not necessarily enough for Windows Vista or Windows 7. You know, both will run quite sluggishly. But, I mean, you know, as of my experience, I've just found, you know, in general, 7 will run better on a computer than what Vista will. And it's actually found a display driver. See that? It says downloading. Oops. I'm not supposed to get that on the screen. Before I give this uh, computer back to my friend, I'm going to, you know, give the screen a proper cleaning. Because I'm just nice like that. So now it's installing the driver software. Windows has finished installing. It will not work until you've restarted the computer. Well that's okay, what we're going to do is we're going to set this up and then we'll restart the machine. And as soon as we've done that, I can enable Erno. Actually, I think it might be an idea to restart first before registering a VAST because it doesn't actually, it prefers to have a high res display. So here we go. So again, it's going to take a wee bit of time to shut down. Actually, Talking of which, probably might be an idea to take the Windows 7 DVD out because I don't need it in here anymore. Oh, and it's obviously found loads of Windows updates. That does happen. As soon as you connect a Windows computer to the internet, bam, the updates start coming. And I think now that we're actually starting to get um, a half-decent resolution. Configuring Windows update. Obviously, I'm going to have to leave this machine switched on for a while and just let it go through the motions of installing all the Windows updates. But hopefully now, when we get to the desktop, we are actually going to see a marked difference in the quality of the display. Well, we can actually see that the display now is actually widescreen and it's not all bunched up and stretched and bleh. But we're still using a really, really terrible, 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 terrible Windows, Vista, uh, Windows basic theme. So let's change that. Crackly sound fell, uh, failed derp. There we go. So now we've got Windows Aero. Very nice. Just to kind of check the screen resolution. Welcome to a vest. Welcome to a vest. 
I think you might need to register before you can use that. Nice. What? Okay, so it's actually only let me have uh, 1025 by 768. So I am going to have to have a look into that because it's, I thought it was a wee bit scrunched up still. Just obviously not as big. So, um, herp derp. What on earth is going on here? Might be able to find some better drivers or something. There's a couple of things obviously I still need to install. I want to see if I can install and, you know, get and install some better sound drivers because the sound is a wee bit crackly. But this is a known problem with Windows 7 and this system and there should be a solution. Um, <clears throat> obviously I will never give a computer back to a customer in less than perfect working order. You know, if I can help it because, you know, I just don't see um I just I just don't see an excuse for that. Um you know I, I like customers to be happy. You know, I, I want to you know I want repeat custom. You can. But I seriously think that this system needs that extra gig of RAM. Scan has been completed. Well, well that's very nice. Network adapters. Great, you're not picking up on some Wi-Fi. That's ah, here we go. Now you are. That was a, that was odd. It'll pick up on the keystrokes, but um, yeah. I wonder if it'll go online and actually find the drivers. Searching Windows Update. Well, isn't that nice? <clears throat> and it seems to be an issue with these EI systems computers that the Wi-Fi won't switch on by default. I mean, I like Wi-Fi that remembers the last date it was in, so if I switched it off, when the next time I power up the machine, I like it to be switched off. Similarly, if I've left it switched on, the next time I power up the machine, I want the Wi-Fi to switch itself on. But at the moment, what's happening is Windows Update is actually searching for the unidentified device. Oh, spooky, so it is. There's going to be uh, other things that I need to install, like the uh, trackpad drivers and um, kind of thing, kind of things like that. Um, but I mean, obviously, this is going to take some time to do. So while I'm doing that, I think what I'll do, I'll just go and register a vast antivirus. You know, just so that I'm, you know, completely sure that that is kind of registered. What I'm going to do is I'm going to register under my own email address just, you know, to make things easier for my friend. Just going to go for, going to go for the standard protection. Now there's obviously lots of schools of thought of as to whether you should go for a paid for or a free antivirus system. Um, Elmol3, he says that, you know, unless you're a business, going for a paid for antivirus solution you're getting ripped off. Personally, I like the extra security it can afford, but choose wisely. And actually, I am a business, so really, you know, I should be using paid for antivirus. And I have been using Kaspersky 2013, but, you know, I was wondering if that was attributing to the uh, my computer's kind of slower speeds. I switched to it fast and it has got a wee bit faster, but you know, still not as fast as it probably should be. This lack of RAM is really quite disturbing. Retrieving information, please wait. Oh, 
Okay, so what I can do is I can go My head is in the way on purpose. I'm just going to register. Registered! Yay! There we go, now the antivirus software is registered and is up to date. And the wireless driver is downloading and has actually downloaded 100% of 0 0.2 megabytes. <coughs> so I'm just going to sit there and wait for it to install. I love Windows 7, how it can just kind of pick a driver off of the internet and just like that install it. Microsoft, they really did do well with Windows 7. Everything about it is just... So, now the Wi-Fi has been installed. It's a real tech card. Now there is a surprise. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm just going to kind of uh, put the video off while I go ahead and install all of the drivers that are needed for the system to work. Um, but before I do that, the next thing that you want to do is to activate Windows. Now again, you do this in the device manager, well, the system properties, activate Windows Online now, and because I'm still connected via Ethernet, I can do that. Excellent. The Windows Activation Server is my friend though. So, that's all sorted. So this is a basic overview of uh, how to install Windows 7 and that's what I've done on this machine. However, this is far from a complete installation as you know. So um, I think what I'll do is I'll just continue doing what I need to do and then uh, I'll get back to you. So, yeah. Well folks, this is epic jump cut time. Um, the date is... Uh, the 28th of March, um, 2013. Uh, the time is currently um, 5 minutes to 5 in the morning. And I've got to say, 10 years ago, I would have actually been on a coach setting off to France 10 years ago today. And let me tell you folks, that was one of the most epic trips I've ever taken. Um, I went with school and a load of friends from school. And... Um, yeah, I've got to say, it, it really was just, um, it was a, it, it just was that good, seriously, just, yeah. Anyway, um, I had to actually go scouring the internet for a proper uh, VGA driver for this, uh, for this laptop. Turns out, um, it didn't like the one, um, that uh, Microsoft downloaded, as it would only, uh, do uh, 1024 by 768 which on a widescreen display is no good. So basically what's happened is um, I've downloaded that driver now. I have the Wi-Fi installed, that's all working. As you can possibly see there, I'm on Wi-Fi. 
And um, I believe this camera light is actually making the phone go off focus, which is uh, derp. But um, now I'm just... Uh, I also um, ran Windows Update, uh, well, about, uh, you know, before I went to bed, I kind of left that running overnight. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I think, is install, you know, all all the apps that my friend needs. I've decided to go for a Foxit Reader, as it's a wee bit more lightweight than Adobe Reader. And um, as this um, this is quite a small machine in terms of specification... But uh, while I'm doing all this, I'm actually um, I'm actually uh, listening to "Don't Watch This" with UXW Bell. This is this is kind of the last blog TV episode of "Don't Watch This." We we thought that last week was going to be it, but basically we're all just kind of counting down the hours till uh, blog TV goes pet part, which is supposed to be happening now. It's awful sad, actually. Um, and after this, UXW Bell is actually going to be taking a hiatus. Um, to tidy up the office, the amplitude, the fortress of amplitude, rather. He's actually going to be taking a look at this microwave cam. Only on the UXW Bell Show do you actually get to see this. Seriously, I I do like this, and you know, and and to be honest, I mean, I I chat to UXW Bell. Do you know what? I'm honoured to say that. And the guy is. He's a very, very decent lad, actually. As are most of the Stereo Dust Particles family, if not all of them, you know. I've spoken to V Westlife, Weasel 2 HTM, you know, people like that Corvette fan. Every one of them are decent folk who will always, you know, I've got a lot of time for them because they have a lot of time for everyone else. You know, I mean, it's, it's not just like, oh, there's UXW Bell, he makes awesome videos. It's, there's UXW Bell, he makes awesome videos, and he will talk to us. Like, you know. <laughs> Aye. But, um, yeah. So, I'm, I'm just kind of enjoying the last um, Don't Watch This show while um, I'm away fixing this laptop. VLC Media Player. Every computer needs VLC Media Player. I think I've got the sound going on it. Obviously, if my friend has any problems with it, I'll just have her bring it back to me, and, you know, anything needs done, not a problem. But um, I believe all the Windows updates have been installed. And talking of Windows updates, Windows XP and Windows 7 systems, I'm not sure about Vista systems, but I'm pretty sure it'll be the same. I have not worked with Vista systems in quite a long time. Any Vista system I've got my hands on, as you can see, has usually ended up with Windows 7 on it. Um, <clears throat> but XP and 7 systems, you'll have to watch out for this. You'll be invited to install something called Bing Desktop. Seriously, don't. You don't need it. It just takes up valuable space. You really do not need Bing Desktop. So, there's, um, there's a few things installed on here. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to install, you know, just a couple more things. An office suite, kind of some, some things like that. Um, I don't want to overload this machine, but I certainly want to, you know, make sure that my friend has everything she actually needs on the machine. So that will be like Adobe Flash Player, Java... Um, I don't know if they have an iPod. I think I think there's an iPod in the family, so iTunes will definitely have to be installed on here. QuickTime, because some websites still use it. So, I mean, and luckily, um, a lot of this stuff can actually be found on my computer's hard disk, so I don't need to go out searching for things. So I'll jump cut back to you when the machine's done. Okay, well, um... It's um, been a bit of a it's, it's been a bit of a slog, but to be honest, not too much of one. Um, the time is currently half past six in the morning. It's actually daylight outside. Very nice. And um, yeah, so um, I finally I would say I finally finished this machine. 
Now, um, it's quite good. Um, I'm just finally running. Um, I'm just running a final round of Windows updates. And um, don't watch this is still going on. So it's uh, it's pretty good, except uh, I now seem to be having buffering issues, and uh, one of my favourite songs is playing. So I've just decided to restart the page. However, um, let's have a look at what programs are installed on here. Um, there is uh, Foxit Reader, like I said before. iTunes is installed. Uh, Microsoft Office Standard 2010. Always a nice wee addition. Um, QuickTime, the SIS VGA Utilities Startup. And then I have... Um, I did say that I would uh, do this for my friend. I've installed an Atari 2600 emulator. Um, so basically... Oh my goodness, why is this taking so long to load? So uh, this is Stella. Um, you may have seen me use it in one of my videos. I still say I still say this system needs more memory. So um, let's play a wee bit of Pac-Man. Don't you just sometimes? Don't you just sometimes hate things that have been emulated? I'm not doing too well here, am I? Do you know what? I'm going to have to see if I can get a better audio driver. I probably will do that before I hand this machine back. <coughs> oh yeah, and there's XL 2010. I must have started it up. Um, not only have I given my friend an Atari emulator, though, I have also um, installed... Um, a master system, well, a Sega emulator actually. I'm just gonna, oh. Yeah, 1280 by 800 is a wee bit of an awkward resolution. What I can do though is um, set the uh, window size to. Uh, damn these tiny mouse pointers. Damn them, damn their children, and damn their children's children. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load the Master System ROM, if it'll let me. There we go. Alex Kidd in Miracle World. The sound, all, the sound also derps a wee bit on here as well. I tell you, it's odd uh, seeing something like Alex Kidd in full screen on one of these machines. I mean, I, I do play it, but I usually play it in windowed mode, so I can watch blog TV, well, blog TV, uh, VLC media player in it. Oh my goodness, I'm going to have to sort this out. Why the heck it's doing that? I do not know. And I've forgotten which button to press. Way. So I've basically messed most out of uh, 2 Unlimited with uh, Get Ready For This Derp. Completely automated show there, so uh, basically uh, UXW Bill has got his um, Fortress of Amplitude basically on autopilot, which I think, I think is quite cool. In a way, but only like because he's in the chat. Otherwise, I mean, you just don't get the interaction. So there we go. We've got Alex Kidd in Medical World installed on here. So that is pretty much, um, I would say that is pretty much a machine done. So, uh, I mean, everything is installed. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to test out YouTube before I do actually sign off this video. Come on, load, load!
youtube.com I've not seen all of uh, Elmo's videos just yet so I'm just gonna have to pick one that I know um Oh, this sound is terrible. So this is a, a review on the Dell Mini. So that sound is actually terrible, I have to be honest. Ugh, it really is, so I need to do something about that as a matter of urgency. So that is my next task. So it seems that the best thing I can do is actually install the latest Realtek high definition audio driver. Do you know what, I can't help but feel that I've done this before. I'm just hoping that it was one of those things that I started doing, but then, you know, something got in the way. 32-bit win. Well, I've managed to get mostly, uh, the driver mostly sorted out. Um, still a wee bit of a crackle, but I mean, I can play regular window sounds absolutely fine. Not a problem. I really don't know what was with that uh, updated driver, but um, it seems that this is actually quite a common problem. But, um, and I've tried everything. I've tried disabling he uh, sound enhancements. I've tried, um, <clears throat> so it's so I really, I, I really don't know what it is. But, um, well, I guess it's kind of just one of those things, I guess. Seems to be two microphones on here. So I don't know if I uh, disable this one. That's going to help any. You never know. I actually wonder if uh, upgrading the memory will help sort it. I think it might actually. Yeah, I mean it is only like, you know, it is only one gigabyte, so. And I've not been able to, you know, find my extra RAM anywhere, so, you know, maybe I don't have any. Probably is um, quite a possibility. that I've actually used it. So I will need to actually go out and get some more for this system. A bit of a shame, really. Considering I actually don't have any more. I've got 512 megs of DDR1, which is uh, really no use to Anyone, certainly not for a machine like this. But I would definitely, definitely say that this system needs that two gigs of RAM. Oh, wait a minute, I have found some memory. 
That's um, yeah, it's another five twelve stick. So really, the only way that I'm going to be able to upgrade it is to actually, you know, get to one gig sticks. So let's kind of have a look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use Internet Explorer. I'm going to go to the Crucial.com scanner. Now this is actually a really good utility. If I use a crucial system scanner, basically what the memory, well, the system scanner will do is that will actually scan the system and it will actually show me what RAM this system uses and how the current RAM is configured. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it from here. I can actually find the mouse pointer, which I'm having great trouble doing so because this is not my system and I can't therefore just go ahead and reset the mouse pointer to large black. So now it's actually scanning the system. This will actually just take a few minutes. Oh, how ironic, I used Internet Explorer to do that, I didn't need to bother. Actually does work in Firefox nowadays. Do you know, I do wonder, actually, what the browser, um, the different market ship, what browsers have the uh, most market share nowadays because you know even when Firefox was just kind of starting to become popular and everyone seemed to have it, it did seem that Internet Explorer was uh, the most li widely used. Well this is quite interesting. Currently installed RAM 1 gigabyte. Total number of memory slots 2. Well if that is the case then I think I might be a wee bit generous and, you know, just uh, let my friend have some of uh, the RAM out of the Dell Latitude D510 because that's got um, one gigabyte. I might be able to find another 512 stick to uh, complement this one. I'll just put that into there. So, um, Yep, that, that's um, basically my next job, is to um, actually upgrade the RAM in this system. Turns out this machine didn't seem to have two RAM slots. I, I don't know why I wasn't able to get that stick of RAM in, but it um, seems that... Um, and I also tried a 2 gigabyte module out of my main laptop, just... Not not to put in here permanently, but just to try it, and it doesn't seem to want to work. So it seems that um, this laptop is stuck with one gig of RAM. But then again, I do guess you get what you pay for, which is a bit of a shame, really. However, having said that, the machine does actually seem to work okay. So um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to stick a fork in it and call it done. Well, actually not stick a fork in it literally but um, there we have it this machine is finally fixed 
So I'll be able to text my friend now and tell her she can come and collect it. Absolutely brilliant. And um, as for this video, this video is uh, concluded also. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel um, if you enjoyed watching this video, if you'd like to see more. While you're, uh, while you're on my channel, please feel free to peruse through my videos. And I hope you'll all join me for my next one. Thank you.